Welcome to A Town Called Asbestos, a series of webisodes focusing on the history of a community that you're soon going to become very well acquainted with. This is a big and small, near and far, short story of Quebec asbestos. Over the next five webisodes, we will trace the history of asbestos, showing its complete life cycle from a small town in Canada to the global stage, from creation to collapse. While different types of asbestos can be found all over the world, from Russia to South Africa, Canadian asbestos is particularly interesting because of its complicated and controversial past. Many of you may think that asbestos is an artificial, chemical-heavy product that some mad scientist intent on making a fireproof, cancer-heavy world concocted in a secret lab years and years ago, but surprisingly, that's not actually the case. It's a naturally occurring fibrous mineral that was created deep within the earth over 700 million years ago when there were massive continental shifts and collisions that created mountain ranges throughout the world. It basically looks like a hairy rock that you can break apart with your hands and weave much like you would wool or cotton. And in fact, there's an old Quebecois legend about a mysterious stranger happening upon a lumber camp late one night asking if he could dry his feet by their fire. The lumberjacks agreed, but then were terrified when instead of taking off his socks and shoes and, and just putting them near the fire, he stuck his feet right into the fire. The lumberjacks fled from the cabin thinking that this was the devil in disguise, when in fact the man, mysterious stranger that he was, was actually just wearing asbestos socks, which looked remarkably like wool socks. So in Canada, these collisions created the Appalachian Mountain Range, which runs from Greenland to the southern United States, straight through the province of Quebec. When the Appalachians were formed, so too were massive deposits of asbestos in the area between present-day Montreal and Quebec City, through intense heat and the splintering of serpentine rock. If you want to understand the controversy surrounding the global asbestos trade today, and who doesn't, you need to understand the global history of the town of Asbestos, Quebec. While it certainly was not the only community that mined this deadly mineral in the province of Quebec or the world, Asbestos, the town, was and still is home to the world's largest open cast crystal asbestos mine, the Jeffrey Mine, named after William H. Jeffrey, the gentleman farmer who discovered the deposit in the 1870s. Now, the majority of the world's asbestos supplies are found in relatively straight veins running parallel to the Earth's surface. But what Jeffrey discovered was something completely different, and in this difference, remarkable. The deposit of what was to become asbestos was not straight and not simply horizontal. It was circular and spiraled down into the Earth as deep as the Appalachians are high. Picture a giant tornado funnel of asbestos frozen and implanted in the Earth. This is what was discovered here in the late 19th century. doesn't necessarily mean it was successful. Jeffrey was sort of a crotchety old man and he didn't play well with others. 
while he diplomatically hired seven Anglophones and seven Francophones in 1879 to start the Jeffrey Mine. He refused to talk with the other more knowledgeable and successful mine owners in the region. Because of this, Jeffrey failed to understand the unique layout of the land and quickly became bankrupt. The mine, described in geological surveys at the time as small and insignificant, went bust. It wasn't until German immigrant Fira Boas took control in 1893 that the Jeffrey Mine began to resemble what we see in asbestos today. Boas understood that the unique spiraling asbestos deposit at this location was actually an advantage, and when he examined the massive piles of waste rock Jeffrey's men had taken from the land, he discovered that in the town of Asbestos, a somewhat uninventive name the Royal Mail Service had given the community a few years before, there was no such thing as waste. Everything taken from the land was 100% sellable and usable asbestos. While some of the fibers were too short to weave into fireproof fabric, Boas simply invented new uses for the mineral, adding it to paint, plaster, roof shingles, decorative rock, and anything else he could get a patent for, including asbestos cement, which was used in the construction of London's very own world-renowned underground system. This combined with the sudden and urgent need for fireproof materials that the First World War brought to global markets, began an asbestos revolution throughout the Western world, yet, of course, centered in a town called Asbestos.